Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science, Module 8, Resource Management, and the final video in this series. This one is really more of a case study, and so it's very much about something that is local to you, something that you're aware of, um, is worth uh, looking at, and making sure that you can write something about it when you get to this point. So I'm going to focus on a little example that's local to us, but feel free to adapt this uh, if you need to. What we have to do is research and present information about a sustainability initiative in your community. For us, uh, around this Nelson Bay area, we are in Warramai land. That's the lands upon which we meet and upon which we do all of our work. And so one of the things that we wanted to try and do is to have a little bit of a look at uh, exactly what sort of initiatives, what sort of things the council does in order to try and link in with the local knowledge and also to try and encourage, I guess, um, awareness, raising awareness of sustainability in the local area and what sort of things we might be able to look at or write about in an example like this. So one thing that we've talked about previously are totems. Aboriginal society is governed by roles and responsibilities, law passed on through the generations from the time of the dreaming. Totems carry special law or rules which affect the relationship Aboriginal people have with their environment, their totem and each other. Totems help remind people of the need to balance their need to eat, to live, with the need to protect and sustain the native populations. Different totems have different meanings and there is an accountability. Often, the totems that belong to one group will be different to the totems that belong to another group, and therefore one may use the resource and another may protect it. It's the responsibility of Waramai individuals to care for their totems, which act as a protective mechanism for the preservation of species. Some Waramai people may have several totems, which may come from landscape features, plants, animals, and even the weather. Some examples of these Waramai token totems include the grey shark, the red kangaroo, and dolphin. Waramai also had gender token totems. The Waramai also had gender totems, which symbolises the solidarity of the sexes. The men's totem was the tiny bat, and the women's was the tree creeper. A lot of that information too is available on the New South Wales Government and Parks Australia site, and so uh, it's worth having a bit of a look at some specific information relevant to your local area. Here in Port Stephens, there are a number of different awards that are presented by the council each year. And one of those awards is the Environmental Citizen of the Year. This particular award is presented to individuals, organisations or groups that have shown significant service to the environment of Port Stephens over the past 12 months. This could have been demonstrated by efforts to preserve the environment, reduce litter or improve recycling outcomes or the use of the return and earn scheme to raise funds for a meaningful cause. In 2021, the winner was Leone Bryson. And Leone is the vice president and a key member of the Climate Action Port Stephens group. Leone has been actively involved in educating the Port Stephens community about climate change and sustainability and has worked on events such as School Strike for Climate. Through her dedication and hard work, Leone secured grant funding to install renewable street furniture in Raymond Terrace, known as a smart solar bench. And that uses energy from the sun to enable users to charge their phones and connect to Wi-Fi. These sorts of awards highlight some of the contributions that locals are making in their own areas to sustainability, not only at a local level, but on a global scale as well. So these are the sorts of things that are worth having a look at when you're trying to write about some initiative that's part of your local community. There's plenty of opportunities, there's plenty of options, and there's plenty of people and groups that are making a difference or at least seeking to make a difference to the way that we do things in this country and perhaps to be able to do them with a more serious eye on sustainability. This is our last video. And it would be remiss of me not to point out the great time that I've had working through this uh, course for the first time. I had taught some Earth and Environmental Science previously, but this was my first run through with this new course. And it's been a great course. And one of the reasons it's been so good is because I've had a couple of really fantastic students to work with. Um, they've even 
provided me a little sample of their artwork, or one of them has as well. And so um, to Ella and Matilda and Gina and Caleb, it's been heaps of fun. It's been a challenge being able to work remotely, more, I guess, for you than it has for me. Uh, but thank you very much for the fun we've had, um, the learning that we've put together through the course of this video series and this whole entire HSC course and all the very best for the HSC that's coming up very soon. Not just to you four guys, but to everyone who's sitting uh, this very interesting subject and hopefully this exam that you're feeling well prepared for. Good luck and thanks for watching.